Multi-Riffs is an amazing new feature that allows you to create your own custom reel tracks performance by regenerating portions of a reel tracks part or by creating the reel tracks performance from the ground up start to finish. There was a previous feature called Multi-Riffs, but it was complicated and difficult to use and wasn't nearly as intuitive or user-friendly as it is now. This new feature is basically a complete redesign of that initial concept and it's easy to use and a lot of fun. So I'll do a few different demonstrations with different styles showing how this feature can be used. Right now I've got this Jazz Fred style loaded here. So this is just a rhythm section style and one great use of the multi-riff feature is to sort of piece together a solo from start to finish where you can try out a bunch of different phrases. So for example you could generate a solo over the first four bars and then press generate again and it will generate a completely different phrase over those four bars. You could do it again and the fourth time, a fifth time. Then you could toggle through all those five different ones you generated just for those first four bars. Pick the one you like and then move on to the next four bars or the next two bars or one bar or whatever you like. So I'll do that right now. Now a great way to look for information on features is to use the feature browser. So I'll show you that right now. You can just hit slash and then enter. And so I'm just gonna filter this by multi-riff. And you can see there it has come up. So it's now giving us some information about this feature and it's showing you how you can access the feature right over here. So you can either use the F8 hotkey or you can right click on the track radio button of the track where you wanna use it and go to track actions. So I'll do that. I'm going to put this solo on the melody track, so I'll right click and go to track actions, multi-riff. Alright, so this is the multi-riff dialog, and you can select the track here, although I got here by right clicking on the melody track radio button, so it's already got that selected, so I'll leave that there. But you can change that up uh, throughout if you want to, or pick a different one. And we just have to decide what real track we want to have on this to, to use the feature. And so uh, I'll press this. Now here's the full list of all real tracks and we could use filters to find exactly what we want in here. But actually, the very first one in the list here is Jazz Swing, 140 beat per minute, tenor sax, which is perfect for the song that we have right here. This is actually one of the very first real tracks we ever recorded. So this will be a great one to try out to use one of these pioneer reel tracks. So I'll select OK. All right, now there are lots of elements in this uh, screen here and I will go over everything in here. But for now, we'll just focus on a, a few things just to get us started right away with hearing some uh, some soloing over this. So first of all, you can generate the range by bars or by a specific range that includes beats and ticks. But I'll just pick bars for this one. I think that will, will work quite well with a tenor sax soloing. So I want to start it at the beginning, so I'll pick bar one, and the number of bars, four bars. I do want to allow lead in, because I want the soloist to be able to start a little bit early, uh, not be limited to just exactly at bar one. And so I'll just try pressing generate now. So there you go. It generated that part over the first four bars. Uh, as it kept playing, you could hear then there was nothing at bar five and uh, nothing beyond that because we only wanted it to generate four bars here. So now I'll generate again and it'll come up with uh, a different riff over that. Now I'm going to stop it right there. Now you'll notice that this now here says riff three of three. When we first entered this dialogue, it said riff one of one. And riff one is basically whatever was on the track before you came into the multi-riff dialogue. That was riff one of one. In this case, that was silence. But if we had actually generated a whole solo on the track before entering this dialogue, riff one would have been whatever was there before. Riff 2 then was the last one that I generated, so I'll go previous, 
So riff two was the, the first thing that it came up with. And then this, the next one after that was riff three here. All right, so I'm gonna keep generating and it'll come up with uh, different options for me. Some of the phrases might be similar, some of them might be quite different, but um, again, we can do this a lot uh, until we find one we really like. Right, so I kind of like that one actually um, not so much the end but uh, I did like that so another thing you can do as you're going through this when you're working on just a particular section uh, as you generate each riff you can write yourself a little note in this memo area here and so I'm gonna write that I like this one or I like the beginning of this one actually is more accurate and, uh, but I'll just keep going and see what else it comes up with. Okay, I'm going to go back to where I left myself that note here. I'm going to listen to this one again. So you can scroll through back through all the ones you've done and then just press play and it'll play that riff. So yeah, I actually like that one, uh, bars one, two, and three. I didn't really like what was played at bar four. so. To move on now, well, first of all, I'm going to accept this one. So, and let's play that again. And I am going to now start generating again here at bar four, because I liked everything up to there, but I want to see what it can come up with if it actually starts at bar four. So I'll change this to bar four, and I'll generate that now. Now, I quite like that one as well. Um, I mean, I, I still want to generate some more riffs, but I think it, that might be the one. So I'm going to write, this is the one to beat in the memo, and I'll generate again. Yeah, not so much that one. So I'm going to go back and uh, find that one where I said this is the one to beat. Now remember again, this was riff two. This was the first one I generated, but riff one is nothing at all. Or actually riff one was the remainder of what was left over from that last riff, if I recall. Yeah, right. That's So riff one is basically the, the, the tail end of, of what I did previously. But I like this one. This is the one to beat. I'm going to select that one, so I'm going to hit accept. Um, so I want to just play it from bar one again in here. And um, yeah, I guess because I started at bar four, it, it went four bars to bar seven. So actually bar eight would be a good place to continue on now. So I'll hit bar eight and I will, and it also, it doesn't need to be four bars. I could change this to eight bars 
And even if I do that, I can still, if I if I like just the beginning of it, I can generate a gain from bar 11 or wherever. So let's see uh, what that comes up with now. All right, so uh, that one I think I like. Let me just play it again. I like that again to a point. Yeah, I think I liked it up to bar 11, and so I think I'll start again now at bar 12. Oh, actually, first, before I do that, I have to accept this one here. And now I can start again at bar 12. So there you see, I could continue on and go through the whole rest of the song. Uh, I think we're going to switch now and try out some other uh, ideas for using the multi wrist feature. But you can see with that, it's a great way to generate a whole solo over your, your track and have it be exactly the way you want it to be. So the next multi riffs example will be with this blues style here. This is a blues shuffle with a new organ soloist. This song is a 12 bar minor blues. And then it goes to the relative major and does a 12 bar major blues. And over that section, I'm going to use multi riffs to add four saxophone parts, which will play some simple but effective four part arrangements. These are multiple blues shuffle grooves that play various rhythmic repeating patterns. And they're part of the bonus reel tracks with Band in a Box 2022. So we saw in the last part, F8 was a hot key to get into the multi riffs dialogue. So I'll just press F8 right now. So first of all, I'll select the first track that I'm going to use. And I've got utility tracks one through four visible here. And those were the ones I'd planned to put these horn parts on. So first of all, I will select utility track one. Now I'll pick the first real track. And we're going to start with an alto sax. And I'll just filter this by shuffle groove sax. So here's the list of all of the real tracks that fall under this category. And you can see for each one, there's a groove one, groove two, and groove three. And I'm going to use groove one for the majority of this. And then there's going to be another one which will be held, which I'll use for a small part of it. But first of all, I'll just add this groove one. So starting with the alto sax. So I want to have this at bar 13 and the number of bars, 12 bars. So I will generate that part now. So now you could hear it playing, the alto sax is playing these short stabs on the one and the end of two. So that's what groove one is. And as I said, there are some other grooves that you can select but I'm going to pick just groove one for now. So that's playing through the whole first 12 bars. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the other three tracks, but I'll pick the two tenors and the baritone. So first of all, first of all, I'll change to utility track two. And now here I will pick tenor sax groove one high generate exactly the same part. So now you could hear there were two saxes playing there. So now I'll just do exactly the same thing again over here. And now I'll pick the lower tenor part. And now here I'll pick the baritone part. So right now, this is playing that 
rhythmic motif through the entire 12 bars. But a very common thing with horn sections is that for the ninth and 10th bars of a 12 bar blues, the horns will instead play a held part. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the alto sax, and now I'm gonna pick an alternate reel track. So this time I'm gonna filter by held sax. So now we have the alto here, so I'll pick that one. And then for this alternate reel track, I only want it to start at bar 21, and I want it to go for two bars. So I'll generate that with the alto now. So now only the alto is playing the held part through that, but now I'll go through and do the same thing with the other ones. So, the high tenor part, alternate reel track. That's this one. The correct bars are still entered here. Now I'll move to the next one, pick the alternate reel track. the tenor low part. And finally the berry. And so now I'll go back to bar 13 and I'll just play this and we'll hear how it sounds. Alright, I'm returning to a file that I created previously. I used this file in the Playable Reel Tracks tutorial, where I had a four bar guitar solo intro, and then I used Playable Reel Tracks just to bring it to a satisfying conclusion. Well, I returned to this file because I want to use multi riffs to actually create another solo later in the song. So this soloist track is then muted from bar five all the way to bar 21. And there is a solo here right now, but I want to use the multi-riffs feature to create an eight bar solo that I've kind of pieced together myself and that has the phrases that I really want to have in there. So another way to access the multi-riffs feature is to actually right click on the track labels and then down at track actions, multi-riff. I'll move this over here just so I can see the note roll notes that it puts in when, when I start generating it. So I want it to be from bar 21 and I want it to be eight bars long. I do want to allow the lead in for this one. So I'll just generate it and then as I go through it, if there are any phrases that I want to regenerate, I'll regenerate them at that time. I actually liked it all the way up until bar 25. I felt at bar 25, it should then start to get a little more intense. So, and it, intensity can also just mean kind of a higher range, uh, notes that are played higher, uh, even if they're played at the same velocity, tend to sound more intense. So 25 and 26, I think I'm gonna regenerate just those two bars. And then for now, I'll leave it at bar 27. So I'll go 25 and two bars, and I'll press generate now. Now 
Now, I did make a bit of a mistake there in that I didn't accept the previous one first before moving to this new generation. However, that's not a problem because that riff number, this is now riff number three, which is just this two bars long. But if I go previous, that is still riff two is the one that I liked that I made previously. So let me play that. So that was the one that I liked that I want to regenerate bars 25 and 26. So now I'll try that again this time. First, I'll press accept. So that is, so that now has been accepted. And now if I regenerate bars 25 and 26, it will only regenerate that and it'll keep that phrase that I liked. So that one actually I like there, but then now that I play that, when it plays some lower notes down here at bar 27, I didn't like that quite as much, but I will accept this. And now I'll go to bar 27 and do two more bars. So I only actually wanted it to go until bar 29. So I will accept that. And then I can mute uh, the rest after that. Cause then I, I figured that would then go back into a vocal part or something like that. In this example, I have a blues style loaded with a harmonica reel track we made with the great multi-instrumentalist Pat Bergeson. This particular reel track is what we call a background soloist meaning it's playing melodic solo-like lines, but deliberately simple, so they work great, for example, underneath a vocal performance. Now with this one, I'm gonna be doing most of my work in the audio edit window, in conjunction with the multi-riffs dialogue. In this case, unlike the last couple of examples, I already have a solo generated. But I'm gonna go through, and for some of the phrases, I might want to replace them with different material. Well, in the audio edit window, it's a lot easier to get a visual sense of exactly what parts you want to regenerate. So I'm gonna start this off at the beginning again, and I'm gonna play it and keep in mind that I might wanna record a vocal part over this afterwards. So I'm, I'm listening for, what I'm wanting to hear is very simple lines, which it, most of it is for sure. But anything that kind of stands out, I might want to try and, and regenerate and see if I can come up with something a little more toned down. So, so anyway, I'll just go through and, and see what I come up with and see if there's anything I might want to replace. So I loved all of that. That was that was great, and I could totally hear uh, a vocal performance over top of that with this sort of just backing it up in the background. This was the only riff right here, this last one here, that I thought I might want to see what else I can get with the multi-riff and see if there's something a little more low-key for that bit. So I'm going to highlight this region, and um, I liked all of the notes right up to the end here, and I like the, the way this one trailed off, so I wanna keep that, and then it can start off right here. Um, and I'm gonna do this in a way that is not gonna overwrite anything before or anything after. So if you recall, F8 was the hotkey to bring up the multi-riffs dialogue, and when I do that, 
you can see that it's already got, I'll move this over here, it's already got the range that I selected in the audio edit window is already entered here. It's bar 11, beat 1, 90 ticks in, and 120 ticks equals 1 beat. So that's, um, yeah, so that's, that's uh, a good way through the first beat. And it goes to bar 12, beat 3, tick 87. So that's the range I selected there. I do not want to allow lead in because I don't want it to, to um, overwrite anything before that. And I also don't want it to generate an extra beat at the end. I really just want whatever is in there to be regenerated. So I'm going to press regenerate now. And also, I would love to that not only do you hear a little bit before, well, you hear a full bar before the new material that's regenerated, it also keeps playing afterwards. So you can hear how this new material then goes into the next phrase. And in this case, it, it went really well into the next phrase. I loved the way that worked. So I'm going to actually, like I did before, I'm going to write a little memo and say, I really like this. And, uh, but I'll generate again just to see what else it comes up with. But I think maybe I'm going to be coming back to this one here. So generate new. That was nice in that it was low key, but I still think I like the one before better. Um, yeah, so let me try it again. And you'll notice when I press generate again, you'll see that everything is exactly the same here and exactly the same here, which is exactly what I want. Uh, um, yeah, because I've selected this region and that, so that's the only part I want changed and that is the only part that is being changed, which is great. Now, that might have been the same as the first one because uh, it can draw from some of the same material. So let me just play this. Oh no, that was different. All three of those were different. So I, I generated three of them. It says here riff two of four. And of course, the first riff is just what was there before. But this is the first one I generated. So that's riff two of four. And I love that. I'm going to keep that. So I'm going to press accept. And now I'm going to, uh, I'm not going to stay in this dialogue. I'm just going to hit OK. And I'm just going to start playing back here again. Now, this is the second uh, 12 bar blues chorus. So I think. I'm thinking I'm going to sort of allow more uh, in this than I did in the first one, um, just to, to make the second chorus a little bit a little bit more. I think it'll still sound fine with a vocalist singing over top of all this, but I'll continue playing through and see if there is anything I want to change. There might not be, but uh, I'll see. So now I'm thinking that, again, I, you know, I have no idea what kind of vocal part would go over top of this. I'm just sort of uh, winging it here. But I'm thinking that if there was two choruses of the 12 bar blues with vocalists, then maybe we might want to actually have a harmonica soloist, not just a background soloist, but sort of a, a more intense soloist. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select this whole next 12 bars. And in this region here, I'm going to press F8 again to bring this up. And I showed you a little bit of the alternate real track option. So I'm going to pick the alternate one here. And now this is um, the background soloist blues shuffle Pat. But I think there's also a soloist that we recorded with Pat that was not intended to be background. So let me just type in shuffle Pat. 
There you go. So this is the Blues Shuffle Pat background soloist, but then here is a soloist Blues Shuffle Pat Swing 120. So I'm going to select that as the alternate reel track that we're going to use for just for this generation here over those bars there. So I will press generate now. And actually in this case, I think I will allow a lead in and I, and I will allow an extra beat uh, at the end for soloists. And I'm, I'm looking specifically at this. This looks like it'd be fine if something got overwritten kind of to the left of the region that I selected. So I'll generate now and see how that sounds. So I could continue going phrase by phrase and see if there were things that I wanted to change about this. But for now, I'll leave it the way it is. And yeah, multi-riff is very fun to use and, and is great for coming up with a custom solo or a custom background part or even rhythm parts.